Hi guys, so today I'm doing another Feature Friday where I'm talking about Pamela Card's jewelry. She is one of my favorite jewelry creators and I just want to share like her different necklaces that I wear every day. I also wanted to talk briefly about why I do this Feature Friday and what it's about. I really like to find like artisan and handmade pieces. So anytime I can find a brand that really does that, maybe it's not even a brand, just like one single person making something. I love to talk about that. I also think it's interesting that there's become more of an insurgence, I guess you call it, of where people are buying more handmade stuff than they used to. And some people say that has to do with like, there's so much mass production on the market that when you buy something that's like handmade, it just feels so special. A lot of that has to do too with like how much technology has become a part of that that it's almost disconnected from someone actually making it. Ironically, it's only because of technology I can show and feature someone amazing like Pamela Card and she can grow like this online business. So I'll be sure to give you guys links to like everything that I'm wearing and to her shop and like her processes down in the description. But yeah, I'll just get like right into it. So first of all, I wanna talk about where she finds inspiration because I think that's really neat. She travels around the world and goes to museums and palaces and just like there's this grand bazaar in Istanbul that she's visited where she's able to like understand ancient techniques and designs and then she'll make jewelry pieces off of those. So she uses techniques like I've learned a lot about from just doing research about how she does it and like what other people say online, how it's done. So she uses a technique called lost wax casting and hand forging. I'll leave a link to like how other people do it because it's just so cool how they make sculptures doing lost wax casting. It's just amazing to know that someone created something out of basically nothing, just out of their own imagination. So I just think that's just so inspiring. So the first necklace I wanna talk about is this one, which is the Aphrodite necklace, which is the goddess of love. She actually has little dolphins sculpted around it. And this one is awesome because it's double-sided. So on this side, it has like a chariot race. That's just so neat because I can basically have two necklaces in one because it's double-sided. And both sides are hand-carved. So this is gold-plated in 24 karat gold. So there's sterling silver underneath. So I ended up going with the 22-inch chain on this. So she has different lengths of chains for each necklace. So you can definitely decide like how you wanna layer your other necklaces and pick out maybe which outfits you wanna wear your necklaces with to decide like how long you want it to be. This one is my longest necklace just for reference. So for my shortest necklace, I have this one, which is the Rosetta. I just think that this one is beautiful because it's kind of like a flower type of motif. She was inspired when designing this one by ancient tiles like a mosaic tile in Istanbul at the Grand Bazaar. That's another example of how she'll just find things that bring her inspiration. I'm not as familiar with like the ancient civilizations as I am. I'm such a history geek about like 1500s on. I find it so interesting that there's just all of these relics that she makes things out of. So really all of my necklaces are the 24 karat gold plated options, but she has other ones too out of like rose gold, I believe, and gold filled, I wanna say. But check her website for like all of her different options. And she also has more than just necklaces, but that's just really what I have collected so far. So I've got a couple more to show you. So this one is the Nikea necklace. And this one she found as an example from the Louvre, where she had ancient Egyptian coins and she was just inspired to make something that kind of looked like that. This one, when I got it, had a different type of chain that I really like. I think right now she has the beaded chain on it, which is similar to the Rosetta. But again, you can choose your chain length and all of that. So why I went with this one is I have coin necklaces and they're very obvious coins, but it was nice to be able to get one that was more obscure. Like there's not an actual shape on it per se. There's like a hint of it that she made. I also like that it's got like these little beads on the bottom. That's so cool. And lastly, I have this one, which was my first one that I ever got from her. And it's called the Constantinople necklace.
necklace. I didn't want to wear all of my necklaces at once, <laughs> so, but I thought three was plenty. But this one is another hand-carved one, gold-plated again. This was before I knew how to take care of gold-plated jewelry, um, so eventually one day I can always get this re-plated. But you're not supposed to get things wet or um, like sweat in them too much because then it will just rub off and that won't be so great. <laughs> I actually wore this in a very sunny day in Florida and I was just a pool of sweat. <laughs> but I was wearing a lovely gold necklace, so. <laughs> so for inspiration for this one, um, again, she was at the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. This is supposed to represent the Ottoman medallions that she saw there. Again, it's like a hint of a actual coin. So it's, if you want something more um, obvious as a coin necklace, like the Aphrodite is a really good choice, but if you like that it's more obscure, then this one's a really good one. So this one's the Constantinople. So I think that I'm really attracted to like gold and brass jewelry. And I also really like the Parisian vibes that these ones give off. Honestly, like some of them, like this one was in the Louvre. So that one's really cool how I, you can wear things that are really inspired by eras. It feels more authentic that way, you know, than if you were to buy something that's more like mass produced. Also, what's really cool is that they're made to order. So if you are looking to like buy someone a present by their birthday, just be considerate of like how much time that it takes to make these. I think it's a couple weeks at most. But yeah, I just think it's great too when things are made to order because then there's like even less waste and stuff. So that's about it. I'm just really thankful to share about Pamela Card's jewelry with you guys. It just really makes every outfit feel more put together and higher class. Like I honestly could wear these with pajamas and I would feel like I was wearing something like super top notch. Honestly, every day when you are wearing something that someone handmade, it's just so special, you know? So definitely check out all of her information down in the description and I will see you guys on Monday.